So uh, last class we started with complex numbers, and I gave you a brief introduction about complex numbers. In fact, we also did representation of complex numbers, isn't it? Point form, polar form, Euler's form, correct? So today we are going to start with operations on complex numbers. So I think uh, whole class today will go in operations on complex numbers because there are uh, many of them to take care of. So let's start with operations on complex numbers. Operations on complex numbers. The first operation that I would like to discuss here on complex numbers is comparison of complex numbers. Comparison of, of complex numbers. Sir, you should never compare anything, sir. <laughs> Okay, so comparison, when we talk about comparison, we talk about two types of comparison. One, are they equal or are they not equal? So equality and inequality are the two types of comparison which normally we talk about. So if you talk about equality, so when you say one complex number is equal to another complex number, let's say Z1 and Z2 are equal complex numbers, then it can only happen, then it can only happen when their real parts are equal and their imaginary parts are equal. So this can only take place when A1 is equal to A2 and B1 is equal to B2. Okay, that is to say the real part of Z1 should be equal to real part of Z2 and imaginary part of Z1 should be equal to imaginary part of Z2. So only under these two conditions or only when these two conditions are simultaneously met, you can say one complex number is equal to the other. However, a very, very good thing here is that there is nothing like inequality of complex numbers. So this operation is invalid. This operation is invalid. Please do not write such kind of operations. In fact, you cannot uh, say greater than equal to also. If you say greater than equal to, equality makes sense. Inequality doesn't make sense. It is like you can't say one vector is more than the other vector or one vector is less than the other vector. Of course, you can say their magnitude, one vector's magnitude is more than the other or lesser than the other. But as a vector itself, you can't compare two vectors. Similarly, you can't compare two coordinates, right? So vector coordinates, they basically are all the same thing because coordinates are treated as position vectors. So you can't say one coordinate is more than the other or one coordinate is lesser than the other. Yes, you can definitely say the distance of one coordinate from the origin is more than the distance of the other coordinate from the origin that you can say, but as you can say a complex numbers or let's say as points or let's say as vectors themselves, there is no inequality comparison between them. Okay. Is it fine? So this is about the comparison of complex numbers. Those who joined in. So we just started with the operations on complex numbers. And this is the very first operation, which I'm discussing here. Uh, this kind of operation is very useful in solving complex number equations, which we are going to take up towards the last part of our chapter. Maybe the next class will be ending this chapter and we'll be starting with uh, limits and derivatives. So in that session, we'll be talking about how does this particular uh, operation help us to solve complex number equations. Okay. So can I now move on to the next operation, which is addition of complex numbers? Any questions, any concerns here? Do let me know. Okay, so do note down no inequality between complex numbers. Wish our country was also the same. No inequality between any two people. <laughs> Isn't it? So no inequality in complex numbers. See, complex numbers teaches us to be equal. Hmm? <laughs> equal or don't be equal, but no inequality. <laughs> okay, next is next is addition of complex numbers. Addition of complex numbers. Okay, guys and girls, please be attentive in this part. Looks to be very simple from school point of view, but not that simple. I mean, it has got a lot of insights which we are going to talk about. So let us say we have two complex numbers, A1 plus IB1 and A2 plus IB2, okay? When you add two complex numbers, so addition always happens between similar things, isn't it? You can add mangoes to mangoes, you can add guavas to guavas, but you can't add mango to guavas, right? 
So in the same way, when you're adding, you add real to real and you add imaginary to imaginary. So basically addition here will lead to A1 plus A2 plus I B1 plus B2. Okay. Now what is important is not this uh, mathematical operation, but what is important is what is the geometrical meaning of this? So if I ask you, where is Z1 plus Z2 located on the argon plane? If you know the location of Z1 and Z2, what will your answer be? Let us say I, I draw Z1 and Z2. Let's say this is my argon plane, a real Z axis, imaginary Z axis. And let's say Z1 is located over here. Okay. So let Z1 is located over here. Let me call it as a point A. Okay. And Z2 is located over here. Let's say I call it as a point B. Okay. Where do you think will be Z1 plus Z2 located? That is more important for us because my, many of the questions asked in the competitive exam will be revolving around your geometrical understanding of these concepts. Okay. So obviously the answer is wherever A1 plus A2 comma B1 plus B2 is located, right? But geometrically, how do you figure it out? I mean, of course, plotting you will work, but is there any relation by which you can connect O, Z1, Z2 and Z1 plus Z2? Exactly, Nikhil. It's the same way as adding two vectors, right? Now see here, most of you have rightly said that you have to locate A1 plus A2 comma B1 plus B2, but where will it be located? So for that, I'll do a small construction here and we will, I will justify that construction also. So let me join the origin to these positions A and B. Okay. And now I will complete a parallelogram. I will complete a parallelogram here. Okay. And let's say I get this point C. Okay. I claim that and I can justify it also. <laughs> that this point C is actually representing your Z1 plus Z2, right? Now, how? Now, if this is a parallelogram, we all know that in a parallelogram, the diagonals bisect each other, correct? So if I ask you, what is the midpoint of AB? What is the midpoint of AB? Let's say I call this M. So this is your A1 comma B1. This is your A2 comma B2. So midpoint of AB, you will say, sir, A1 plus A2 by 2 comma B1 plus B2 by 2. So M will be nothing but A1 plus A2 by 2 comma B1 plus B2 by 2. Correct? Yes. Now let us say, let us say, hypothetically speaking, the coordinates of C was C comma D. Can I say the midpoint of the midpoint of OC should also be the same point M? Yes or no? M should also be the midpoint of OC because the construction is that of a parallelogram, correct? So midpoint of OC, midpoint of OC will be zero plus C by two comma zero plus D by two. Okay. And since both of them represent the same coordinates, it's very clear that A1 plus A2 by two is equal to C by two and B1 plus B2 by two is equal to D by two. In short, your C comes out to be A1 plus A2 and your D comes out to be B1 plus B2 thereby my justification that this point will be your Z1 plus Z2 point is absolutely right. Isn't it? Correct. Is this understood? Okay. So if somebody asks you that this is Z1, this is Z2, where is Z1 plus Z2? What will you do? Simple. Construct a parallelogram with OZ1 and OZ2 as the adjacent sites. Just like how you basically start and learn uh, adding of two vectors using parallelogram law of addition and the opposite uh, vertex over here, opposite to that O will be your Z1 plus Z2. Okay. So this is with respect to the positioning on the argon plane. Now, a lot of things come out from this diagram itself. Let us try to figure it out. The first thing that comes in the diagram here is look at the triangle OAC. So I will write it down in triangle OAC. Okay. So all of you focus on this triangle OAC. All right. Now, as of now, you see a triangle being formed here OAC, right? So in a triangle, can we say, can we say the following things? The third side is always lesser than the sum of the other two sides, isn't it? So can I say OC will always be lesser than OA plus AC? That means OC will always be lesser than OA plus O 
what is what is ac oc ac is ob actually right because this side length and this side length will be equal correct in short what you are trying to say is that oc oc is nothing but mod z1 plus z2 remember what did i say about modulus when i started complex number chapter the last class modulus of a complex number represents the distance of that complex number point on the argon plane from origin please remember this okay this itself will be you know the you know core principle behind solving many questions okay right so don't don't just know that okay complex number we add the real part and we add the imaginary part that is not the only thing that you are supposed to know maybe for school it will work fine but as a competitive level exam aspirants you are expected to know little bit more also okay so here i am claiming that z1 plus z2 modulus will be less than mod z1 plus mod z2 but with a small modification here i say it is less than equal to right now why less than equal to because see it is not necessary that oac will definitely form a triangle <laughs> it may be like flat also isn't it so what happens if your z1 and z2 are in the same line with o then there is no you know triangle getting formed right so as you can say this parallelogram will become flat right so equality can also hold true right so please note down this is one of the triangle inequalities i'll call it as result number 1 so this is a triangle inequality which comes directly from your geometrical understanding of z1 plus z2 operation okay now i mean this is a question which i already answered but still i am asking you officially when do you think the equality will hold true anybody when do you think mod z1 plus z2 mod will be equal to mod z1 plus mod z2 when when dash filling the blanks first of all there is no y axis shardili welcome to complex numbers no vaishnav i want more generic answer they lie on the same line any two complex number will also lie lie in the same line they just see much much more refined than what you said okay okay anikil sorry i i missed out your answer a1 by b1 is equal to a2 by b2 what is the complex number way of saying the same thing you are on the right track just say it in a complex number language their arguments are same brilliant awesome nikhil okay so when their arguments are same then the equality will exist please note down this itself has come as a question in competitive exam note this down note this down very very important when two complex numbers are such that z1 z2 and origin are in the same line that means the argument of z1 and argument of z2 are same then you would realize that modulus of z1 plus z2 modulus of z1 plus z2 will be equal to modulus of z1 plus modulus of z2 that means in that case your triangle will become flat and if your triangle becomes flat the third side will be equal to the sum of the other two sides isn't it okay simple so this will come as a question like this let us say z1 and z2 are two complex numbers such that mod of z1 plus z2 is equal to mod of z1 plus mod of z2 then which of the following conditions are true and one of the options will be argument of z1 is equal to argument of z2 so you have to mark that option make sense clear why did it why is it less than in triangle don't we know that the third side is always less than the sum of the other two sides that is why it is less than but it could be equal to also but it will never exceed it for sure <laughs> is it clear is it clear situ now yeah okay now if this is obvious then one more okay i have already written one over there so i don't want to write one one two times yeah the second inequality that you will be you know understanding here is that the third side will always be greater than the difference of the other two sides isn't it 
this is also a triangle inequality right in a triangle the third side by the way once we have known that it is less than equal to can i make that correction over here and here as well okay because the triangle may be flat also so here can i say the third side will always be greater than equal to the difference of the other two sides okay that means mod of z1 plus z2 will always be greater than equal to mod of z1 minus mod of z2 mod okay many times we write it as mod z1 tilde symbol mod z2 tilde symbol just signifies the difference okay it takes the absolute difference between the two quantities okay so note this down this is your second in triangle inequality which is very very important and asked in competitive exams now one small question i would like to ask you if you want to answer you can answer here when do you think this will be equal to when do you think mod z1 plus z2 will be equal to mod of the difference of the modulus of z1 and z2 when anybody uh this symbol this symbol you're talking about say too this is a tilde symbol on your laptop you will see over i think uh, one of the keys on the number bar you will see that this is this is a symbol right this is a difference symbol this is to be read as a difference difference means it is just going to give you an absolute difference arguments are same but opposite sign then how they are same <laughs> nikhil what this is an oxymoron yeah <laughs> same but different sign <laughs> okay good try as of now i will leave this uh, you know uh, blank here when i will come back and answer this okay and in fact you will only answer it maybe after some time okay so let us leave this as of now we will come back again to this question and try to answer it okay but well tried nikhil and whoever try to answer this question so we'll come back and answer this question okay now let's move on to the concept of subtraction of two complex numbers any other question apart from when is this equality going to hold true in this page this i will answer in some time don't worry in fact you will only answer it okay now few things that you can note down over here is number 1 uh, i mean i have already made it in the diagram but i'll still write it c represents the represent uh, c point basically represents the position of z1 plus z2 oc represents your modulus of z1 plus z2 okay and and this angle this angle let's say angle theta this angle theta represents your argument of z1 plus z2 okay by the way many people ask me this question sir uh, is there any relationship between argument of z1 and the argument of z2 with argument of z1 plus z2 uh no such relation because the parallelogram can be of various shapes and sizes of course whatever relation you know between the angles possible for a you know parallelogram the same set of relations will hold true but there is no fixed relation like that okay so as of now i would say no such relation exists very good nikhil you are very close to the answer in fact okay Angle between z1 and z2 is 120 degrees. Um, no, say too, but good try, good try. We'll come back to that. Don't worry as of now. Okay, don't worry. I'm not going to leave this question unaddressed because it's a important part of our theory. We'll come back again. So meanwhile, I will just uh, go to the next uh, operation, which is subtraction of two complex numbers. So subtraction of of complex. complex numbers so let's say we have uh, z1 as a1 plus ib1 and z2 as a2 plus ib2 and i want to subtract it see subtraction is same as saying you are doing something like this okay so it is actually an addition of one complex number with the negative of the other that's it okay so as mathematical operation it is very easy and this is what we you know mathematically can see but what is important is not this what is important is the geometrical interpretation 
where is z1 minus z2 located what is the modulus of it what is the argument of it right so all those things we will try to now see in this particular discussion perpendicular to each other no siddharth no 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 but good try okay the answer will be coming now yes <coughs> okay let's discuss it guys angles okay so let's 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 make our argon plane okay and let us say this is my um, this is my z1 and let's say this is my uh, z2 i mean where should i make it okay anyways z1 z2 okay so this is your point a1 comma b1 and this is your point a2 comma b2 okay let me name it this is origin this is point a this is point b okay now very very simple question where do you where do you think is minus z2 located where do you think is minus z2 located right reflect z2 about origin exactly so if you reflect this guy about the origin let me make like this tak 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 here exactly mirror image about origin you will end up getting a point let's say i call this point c this point c is your negative z2 okay and as a matter of coordinate it will be minus a2 minus b2 okay now my my job is to what my job is to locate which point a1 minus a2 comma b1 minus b2 that means i want to locate this z1 minus z2 as a point on this argon plane okay in short i want to locate the coordinate a1 minus a2 comma b1 minus b2 okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to do the same activity as what i did to add two complex numbers so i'm going to make i'm going to make a parallelogram by using oa and oc as the adjacent sides okay so please bear with me or bear with my diagram i think good enough no it's looking like a parallelogram right i did a decent job okay so let's say this point d i'm claiming that this point d is your z1 minus z2 do you all agree with me on this you'll say yes sir we agree because if you have made a parallelogram that means the midpoint of ac and the midpoint of od should be the same and the midpoint of ac okay let's say i call this point to be for the time being c comma d so the midpoint of od midpoint of od will be c by 2 comma d by 2 correct and midpoint of ac would be a1 minus a2 by 2 comma b1 minus b2 by 2 now since both of them have the same midpoint same point because it is a property of a parallelogram that the diagonals bisect each other so we can say a1 minus a2 by 2 is equal to c by 2 that means c is a1 minus a2 and similarly b1 minus b2 by 2 is equal to d by 2 that means d is b1 minus b2 so this point c comma d that you have written this is actually a1 minus a2 comma b1 minus b2 the one which you wanted to locate okay any questions any concerns so let me officially write it over here the point d represents the point d represents your z1 minus z2 the length od represents the modulus of z1 minus z2 and this angle everybody pay attention this angle the small angle here that i'm showing that angle theta represents the argument of z1 minus z2 okay so please make a note of this okay note it down all right now many people ask me sir uh, in order to know the modulus of z1 minus z2 and in order to know the argument of z1 minus z2 do we always have to make z1 minus z2 
you know, complete that parallelogram and figure out all those things? The answer to that is actually no. There is a shorter way to you know achieve uh, you know the the information about the modulus and the argument. Okay, so let me make a diagram which I have already made in the previous slide once again. Okay, so let me just let me just make a diagram for the same location of Z one Z two. So I'll try to copy this diagram over here. So let us say Z one is here, Z two is here. Okay. I have kept my Z1 Z2 same location. Okay. Now please understand this fact. Very very important fact. When you talk about when you talk about OD length, okay. So OD length and let me just complete the diagram over here. We'll, we'll discuss it once again. OD length is actually here. Yeah. Yeah. So this point was actually Z one plus Z two, right? We had already discussed it in our previous slide, correct? Now what I claim here is that this length OD. I hope everybody can see here OD length. This OD length is actually equal to AB length over here. Okay. So if you join A and B, this length AB length is actually the same as OD length. So you don't have to draw actually any kind of a parallelogram to know the length of or you, to know the modulus of Z1 minus Z2. So modulus of Z1 minus Z2 is nothing but this AB length, which is the second diagonal. Remember the first diagonal we used to know the length of Z1 plus Z2, right? Or mod modulus of Z1 plus Z2. The other diagonal gives you the Modulus of Z1 minus Z2. So please make a note of this. So this gives you mod of Z1 plus Z2, and this gives you mod of Z1 minus Z2. Okay. So from the same diagram, you can know modulus of Z1 plus Z2 also, modulus of Z1 minus Z2 also. No separate parallelogram is required. Okay. Now, many people ask me, sir. Can how how do you know the argument of Z one minus Z two from this diagram? Now there's a trick for that also. To know the argument of, so note this down. I would request everybody to write this down actually. To know the argument of Z one minus Z two, basically you find out the angle between the vector or the vectors, the vectors. Z two Z one, or in this case, the vector I would write it as B A vector. Okay, so B A vector. Now give it a shape of a vector. So that is why complex number chapter is so so important that it uses the concept of coordinate geometry, vectors, of course, trigonometry is also involved. So this chapter is multifaceted. It has got so many uh, other verticals of maths coming in. So the angle between the vector B A and the positive real Z axis, okay, that will help you to get the argument of Z one minus Z two. Now this is something which many people don't know. So if you think as if there are two vectors, one is your positive real Z axis, and other is your B A vector. Let's say B A vector is like this. Okay, what is the angle between them? That angle gives you the argument of argument of Z one minus Z two. I hope everybody here knows how to find angle between two vectors. Do you know that? Are you sure? Should I ask you a question? Yes. Are you all aware of finding the angle between vectors? I'm sure Dheera sir would have taught you in the bridge course. Okay, I want to ask you a question now. Okay, okay, for sure. So I'll just give you a question. So this is a vector, okay, and there's one vector which is basically coming like this. Okay, fine. This angle is thirty degree. Fine. Let me name these vectors: a vector, b vector. Find the angle between a b. Find the angle 
बिटवीन वेक्टर ए एंड बी या शोर 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 से तो वेरी गुड आई थिंक वेरी गुड एक्सीलेंट आई थिंक यू यू एस यू एस स्मार्ट एनफ नॉट टू फॉल uh you know <laughs> under this trick see very good so when you find the angle between two vectors you first make them co initial right so here your vector b your vector b and vector a must be made co initial first so a is like this and b should be made like this okay so what are you doing here you are going to make them co initial correct co initial means having the same initial point so something like this and then find the shortest angle between them the shortest angle between them here is 150 so 150 is the angle between angle between a and b vectors very good okay in the same way if i ask you what is the angle between ba vector and the positive real z axis make them co initial and once you make them co initial the angle between them is the argument of z1 minus z2 clear so for that you don't have to make a separate diagram or a separate parallelogram kind of a thing is this fine any questions any concerns up till now with respect to representation of z1 minus z2 modulus of z1 minus z2 argument of z1 minus z2 right now time for some triangle inequalities by the way uh, setu you want me to go to the previous slide for a second or are you are you done with that should i go to the previous slide yeah give me a second yes up uh this this position okay done okay great okay now look at all these scenarios that we have discussed so far and i think now i have given you enough resources or enough tools you can say to answer that question of the previous slide sorry i changed the slide by mistake yeah this question which is still unaddressed i think one of you have almost answered it now can you come back and answer this question mark when do you think when do you think modulus of z1 plus z2 is equal to the difference of the distance of z1 and z2 from the origin think think no and nikhil you are correct <laughs> yeah see here everybody please pay attention now what is the way what is the way that you should be looking at this scenario okay this is basically read it as mod z1 plus z2 read this like this mod of z1 minus of minus z2 okay in geometrical sense you should read it as the distance between see uh, go back to the go back to the slide which i just now talked about see what is this this is nothing but it is the distance between modulus of z1 minus z2 is the distance between the two complex numbers z1 and z2 represented as a point or as points isn't it so what is mod z1 minus z2 mod z1 minus z2 is nothing but it's the distance between z1 and z2 simple as that right when you wrote mod do you remember what you what we basically discussed about it is the distance of z from the origin right so you read it like this you will automatically come get the same idea so it's the distance between z and origin okay in the same way this is a more generalized view of the same thing that mod z1 minus z2 represents the distance between z1 and z2 right if this is kept in mind you will be able to answer the previous question here the question here is when do you think the distance between between z1 and minus z2 
is equal to is equal to the difference of the distances of the complex numbers from the origin so when do you think it will be let's say i call this point as point a and point b so i'll just make a diagram out of it so let's say this is z1 okay and i'm just asking out of you know i'm just keeping this point somewhere over here okay i don't know the exact position that is something which you have to tell me when do you think this distance oh sorry this is minus z2 when do you think this distance is equal to difference of this distance and this distance still not getting it okay now let me make the actual situation then probably you will be able to answer it let us say let us say z1 is here okay and z2 is diagonally opposite over here let's say this is z2 diagonally means diagonally means origin a and b are collinear and it is on the b and a are on the opposite sides of the origin okay like this that means this angle is 180 degree so as to say this angle is 180 degree okay now here let us try to see whether this condition is getting met or not this condition is getting met or not see z2 is here so minus z2 will be here this will be minus z2 correct let's say i call this point as c point can i say that the distance ac from this diagram this distance is oa minus oc correct so distance ac is oa minus oc oa is mod z1 oc is mod minus z2 which is same as mod z2 because modulus of a complex number and the modulus of the negative of the complex number is the same because both are at the same distances from the origin correct so here what did you realize that z1 minus of minus z2 modulus is same as modulus of z1 minus modulus of z2 that means here the situation must be such that the difference of the argument so this can only happen when the difference of the argument so see this is if let's say i call this as theta then the argument of the argument of the other complex number in this case it is this okay this difference this difference should be 180 degrees now many people will say sir how is it difference because phi is a negative quantity as per the di diagram okay so please note down note down that this situation can only arise when the argument of z1 an argument of z2 they differ by 180 degrees they differ by 180 degrees okay that means z1 origin and z2 must be in the same straight line but the z1 z2 point must be on the opposite sides not on the same side if they are on the same side then argument z1 will become equal to argument z2 that i don't want okay is this clear this question has come i don't know i have lost count how many times it has come so many times it has come in the competitive exam is it clear make sense any question you have please do let me know now what did i write that difference see because even if your z1 is on this side z2 is on this side it will still hold to so i can't say you know argument of z1 is more and argument of z2 is less either can happen argument of z2 can be more and argument of z1 can be less but what will be holding definitely true here is that the difference of their arguments will be 180 degree for example in this case if you take argument of z1 to be 30 degrees an argument of z2 you can all figure out from the diagram that is minus 150 degrees so if you take the difference here 
if you just take argument z z1 difference argument z2 that will come out to be 30 minus minus 30 minus minus 150 that will come out to be 180 degrees okay statement in the cloud statement in the cloud is ha huh, see uh, basically setu i am i'm sorry basically manu i am trying to create a scenario where the distance between a and c is equal to the difference of oa and oc because i want this condition to be met no this condition should be met what does this represent distance between z1 and negative z2 right so this is your negative z2 this is your z1 so difference between z1 and negative z2 that is your ac distance is equal to oa that is modulus z1 minus modulus of z2 correct if this condition it is to be met that means this condition is to be met and if this condition is to be met the scenario here must be basically applied then only this condition will be met so your oa and b that is your z1 origin and z2 must be collinear and z2 and z1 must be on the opposite sides of the origin getting it now now make sense manu ha another modulus is because <laughs> the other modulus is because you want this quantity to stay positive uh setu because if it is not positive let's say mod z1 was 3 and mod z2 was 5 3 minus 5 will become negative 2 but mod of any complex number mod of z1 plus z2 that should remain a positive quantity right so here we are talking about the absolute differences okay so in order to make it absolute we are basically putting an extra modulus sign the extra modulus sign is just to make it positive that's what i wrote no oh i think minus sign i yeah correct is yeah z1 minus minus z2 clear in the left diagram why did you mark that as theta shouldn't be it real z where where did i mark theta here next page okay let me go to the next page we'll talk about it yeah it should be with the positive real z axis hmm tell me ha uh -huh. yeah this is from positive real z axis okay now in the subtraction also we will have some triangle law of inequality so let me do the third triangle law of inequality here now everybody focus on everybody focus on which diagram which diagram which diagram this is this diagram itself okay let me write it here itself this three i will write here so all of you now focus on this diagram in triangle oab okay just focus on that diagram can i say ab length will be lesser than the sum of the other two sides in fact you can say less than equal to also because it need it needn't be always in a form of a triangle okay so can i say mod z1 minus z2 will always be less than mod z1 plus mod z2 this is third triangle law of inequality which is going to be tested a lot of questions are framed on this as well so please note this down and as usual now i am going to ask you when do you think the equality will hold true when do you think this will be equal to this when 
filling the blanks when when dash when dash mod z1 minus z2 will be equal to mod z1 plus mod z2 think now you should be able to answer it read it like this when do you think is the distance between z1 and z2 would be equal to sum of the distances of z1 and z2 from the origin when do you think the distance between z1 and z2 right nikhil let's say z1 is here z2 is here when do you think when do you think now from the diagram itself you will be getting your answer when do you think the distance between z1 and z2 be sum of the distances of z1 and z2 from the origin you say sir you have actually drawn it so the answer is there in the figure only correct so when your difference of argument of z1 and z2 is pi please note this down very very important is it okay now fourth triangle inequality that comes from here is that the third side of a triangle is always greater than the difference of the other two sides okay that means mod z1 minus z2 will always be greater than equal to mod z1 minus mod z2 whole mod is it fine now here also a question will come when do you think the equality will hold true when do you think this will be equal right now read this question like this you will automatically get your answer and imagine it maybe you can close your eyes when is the distance between z1 and z2 equal to the difference of the distances of z1 and z2 from the origin the moment you imagine this you will get your answer there is no rocket science in world when 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 exactly nikhil nikhil I, i think you have got the crux of the situation that's why you are getting all the answers so when their arguments are equal that means they must be o z1 z2 must be in the same line and z1 z2 must be on the same side of the origin means their arguments are equal okay so when their arguments are equal let me just quickly draw a small diagram to illustrate that so when let's say your z uh, z1 z2 is like this z1 z2 okay so you will automatically get your answer that the distance between z1 and z2 will be let's say i call this as a and b so the distance between the distance between z1 and z2 will be oa minus ob okay now i'm just talking about difference i'm not claiming which is more than the other absolute difference okay so here when the arguments so basically both z1 and z2 have the same argument then only this condition is going to be holding true so let me summarize this uh, triangle inequalities because they are going to be very very important and we'll take one question based on that please note down everything and do let me know if you have any concerns and queries Hey, uh, what about the holidays? Do you have any holiday coming up for Ganesh Chaturthi and all? If yes, which day? The Friday. Friday. Okay, so it's for DPS. Friday is Friday is holiday. Okay. Okay, Vashna. September first week, ah? Huh? Ah, we are. I think we are sitting in September second week. 
No, the Shara is in uh, October first. Even my knowledge about festival seasons is very less. <laughs> One day I, you know, I, I logged into my, you know, MS team, and I was waiting for, you know, the class to join in. Then I got a call from the school admin, sir, you have logged in today's holiday. You know, okay. <laughs> No, madam, Centum doesn't give holiday. <laughs> we, in fact, study more on a holiday. <laughs> yes, as a student, we should see holiday as an opportunity. Today, I will complete this. Today, you know, this all backlogs, I will complete. So, no, no holiday from Centum. Centum holiday will now come in the uh, Dashera two days. I think Naomi and Dashmi. And of course, Diwali day. And then it will come uh, uh, 31st and 1st, New Year. So these are the only holidays. We don't give holidays. Maybe uh, national importance, 15th August, if it comes. Then all, then we give 26th January, we give. What, sir? You don't like us to enjoy holidays. Okay. Chalo, uh, Setu has a question. Sir, in figure, why is ABZ1 minus Z2? AB is not Z1 minus Z2, my dear friend. AB is modulus of Z1 minus Z2. Okay. AB is the distance between Z1 and Z2. OA is mod Z1. Ayyo, what happened to my handwriting? And OB is mod Z2. That's how this condition is met. Huh. AB. Again, AB is what? Distance between Z1 and Z2. No. Correct. And isn't it equal to this, which is mod Z1 plus this, which is mod Z2? That's how this condition will hold true, no? This condition is going to hold true under this situation, which I have drawn here, which gives you the fact that, oh, looking at this, I know, oh, the difference of the argument is pi. That is why this condition is holding true. So basically, it's a realization of the same concept through diagram. Okay. Now, let me quickly summarize these four triangle inequalities. Quickly, summary, summary of the four triangle inequalities. Okay. So first, we learned that the modulus of Z1 plus Z2 will always be lesser than equal to modulus of Z1 plus modulus of Z2. And here equality holds, I will write it in brackets here, equality holds when argument of Z1 is equal to argument of Z2. Okay, this is number one. Number two, Modulus of Z1 plus Z2 will always be greater than difference of the moduli. Plural of modulus is moduli of Z1 and Z2. And here the equality will hold. Here the equality will hold when the difference of the argument of Z1 and Z2 is a pi. The third inequality that we saw while we were doing subtraction, modulus Z1 minus Z2 will always be less than modulus of Z1 plus Z2. And here also equality will hold true when, when argument of Z1, difference argument Z2 is a pi. Okay. And the last one, which I just now took recently, modulus of Z1 minus Z2 will always be greater than difference of modulus of Z1 minus Z2. And here, and here the equality will hold when they are having the same argument, argument or amplitude, by the way, Another word for argument is amplitude. Okay. So if you read amplitude, then okay, don't start thinking in like in terms of physics, simple harmonic motion amplitude. <laughs> no, amplitude means complex number means argument. Okay. And unless until stated, we are always talking about 
the principal argument. Is this fine? Any questions, any concerns? Please note this down. Now we are going to take up some questions. In fact, one question we will take up, not, not many. So if they give up um, off on Friday, then your third Saturday will be working, no? In school. Correct, no? No free lunches. <laughs> one off they will give and one class they will keep. No, normally third Saturday is off uh, in NPS. Even I am a teacher in NPS. <laughs> I mean, one of the NPS school, NAFL. So, third Saturday would be working then. I mean, I'm just assuming that the same funda will apply to all the NPS. Maybe I may, I may be wrong also. Okay, should we take questions now? Done. No, 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 you didn't get the point. Argument of Z1 plus argument of Z2 is not 180 degrees. See, 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 again. Diagram, let's look at the diagram. See, if let's say one complex number is here, let's say say two, okay? Another complex number is such a way that it is exactly mirror image. I mean, let's say somewhere over here. Yeah, let's say. Okay. Now here you're saying argument of Z1 plus argument of Z2 is 180 degree. No, that is wrong. Argument of Z1 minus argument of Z2 is 180 degree. How, see? This is argument of Z1. This is argument of Z2. But this argument is a negative angle. Because it is clockwise, no? So let us say, agar ye, I mean, I'm just giving some uh, rough example. If this is, 160, uh, this is 60, then this is actually minus 120. So when you add them, like what you are saying, you will not get 180 degree, no? Are you getting it? When you subtract them, you will get 180 degree. So when you do 60, sorry, 60 minus minus 120, then you'll get 180 degree. That means you do theta minus pi, then you get up 180 degree. Getting it? That's that's the mistake which many people do. You see, it could have been like this also. I'm not denying that it, it's always like Z1 in the first. It could have been like, say, Z1 is here and Z2 is here. Okay, and let us say this angle is 60 minus 60 degree, then this would have been 120 degree. So here now the difference of 120 minus minus 60 is 180 degree. That is why I wrote that tilde sign. Tilde sign means difference depending upon whichever is more that will come to the left, whichever is less that will come to the right. Got it? Sir, in the third one shouldn't be... Where have I miswritten anything? <laughs> third one, no, third one, I'm talking about mod Z1 minus Z2 only. Did I write anything? No, I've written properly only. Where, uh, where I've written minus? This one. Third one. Huh? So the third side is always lesser than the sum of the other two sides. Correct? No. Huh? Yes, it is equal when this condition is met. Equality. This inequality I made a uh, equality in the next step here, and this equality will hold true when this condition is met. What is the problem? I didn't understand your question. Why not Z1 plus Z2? That I've already taken, no? They just only here. One, two, three, four. There are four inequalities. What you're talking about is already taken in one and two. Check. Three and four are different. 
there are four inequalities here mod z1 plus z2 is also there don't worry but mod z1 minus z2 is also there <laughs> okay all right i hope i have given enough time for you to copy let's take some questions let us take some questions where is the right question for this okay let's take this one hmm. if z1 is any complex number such that modulus of z plus 4 is less than equal to 3 find the greatest value find the greatest value of mod z plus 1 i would request you to give me a response on the chat box हम्म हम्म ओके मनु वेरी गुड निखिल anybody else See, you can solve this question in any of the two ways which you have discussed. One is your geometrical idea that itself is like you know a very strong tool to solve it. Other is you can use your triangle inequality. See, triangle inequality itself has come from the geometrical idea. Okay, so uh, any of the two approaches which you feel convenient with, you can adopt that way. Vashna, very good. So three people have responded so far: Manu, Nikhil, and Vashna. others okay so uh, let us take this so i'll solve it in two ways uh, one is by using your regular inequality see what do we want to find out the greatest value of mod z plus 1 the greatest value okay so when greatest value thing comes basically an inequality comes that this should be less than equal to some number so if i say number x is less than equal to let's say 5 then what is the greatest value of x 5 but for that you need to you know remember the less than equal to sign in your mind correct similarly if somebody asks you what is the least value of 4 x you will say 4 because it is always greater than equal to that number correct so when somebody asks me the greatest value i think of less than equal to inequality right now wherever there is a less than in uh, equal to inequality i will try to implement that now let us try to see mod z plus 1 i want to write it less than equal to some number what is this number if i am able to find out my job is done correct now yes or no but what is given to me i have to use that only to achieve it so what is given to you is a complex number z plus 4 and they have given that the modulus of that number is less than equal to 3 now see what i will do So first of all, this number I will write it like this: z plus four minus three. Can I write it like this? Correct. Right. Now, since this the information about this complex number is already given, and three is anyways you know a well-known number to us, 
okay can i use the fact that can i use the fact that if this is z1 and this is z2 z1 plus z2 modulus is less than equal to mod z1 plus mod z2 because i have to use less than equal to symbol so can i say this is less than equal to mod z plus 4 plus mod negative 3 yes or no correct in short what are you trying to say you are trying to say let me write it in brackets here this is not a part of the solving this is just a formula that we are implementing or the inequality that we are implementing so you are trying to say mod uh, z plus 1 is less than equal to mod z plus 4 plus mod of negative 3 in short you are trying to say that this is less than 3 already correct and this is as good as a 3 so you are trying to say a mod of z plus 1 is less than equal to 6 which means the greatest value the greatest value of mod z plus 1 is equal to 6 so 6 is the answer to this question i think nikhil and vashnav got it well done but personally if you ask my opinion if i were to solve this question as a student i will not take this approach i will take the geometrical approach because that is more closer to the basic understanding so i will give you another method method number 2 which i am sure most of you would like it meanwhile copy this if you want to and do let me know if you have any questions guys most of you i know you will be misusing the modulus thing many people say mod z1 plus z2 is equal to mod z1 plus mod z2 please remember that will be true only under a certain condition treat treat uh, complex number like vectors don't apply scalar laws on it like how you apply it to normal scalar quantities so complex number is what a position vector so how you deal with a position vector the same way you can deal with it all right now i'll show you method number 2 see method number 2 is basically based on the geometrical idea what is the geometrical idea let us try to understand first of all what is the meaning of this geometrically speaking z is some complex number okay let's say some moving complex number it is dancing around but it is dancing around in such a way that it is satisfying this condition what what can you interpret from this okay should i give you a better a reformed version of this expression what can you interpret from this geometrically speaking geometrically speaking excellent 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 very good see dear student it means that z is such a point 
whose distance from minus 4 that means minus 4 let's say it's a complex number minus 4 comma 0 So Z is such a point whose distance from minus four always is less than or equal to three. That means whatever is this distance, whatever is this distance, that distance is always less than or equal to three. Then where should Z be lying? Any idea? Nikhil has already given the answer. Others, tell me, where should Z be lying? You say, sir, Z should be lying on or inside a circle of radius three units. And having the center as having the center as minus four comma zero, correct? That means your z can be moving anywhere on or inside the circle. Okay, so z is like free to move, but it is moving in such a way that its distance from minus four, which is actually a minus four comma zero complex number, should always be less than or equal to three. so it should be within that circle of radius 3 having the center at minus 4 comma 0 it can be on the circle also okay if this is understood then you will be able to solve the you know requirement of the question so the question is asking what is the greatest value of mod z plus 1 now see mod z plus 1 is what mod z plus 1 is mod z minus minus 1 correct basically it represents the distance of z from minus 1 comma 0 minus 1 comma 0 is here let me show you with a yellow color this is minus 1 comma 0 why because this is already 3 right this radius is already 3 correct so this is minus 1 comma 0 now which complex number point in this zone which i have shown by dotted line it is Which complex number out of these all dots which I have made is at a greatest distance from minus one comma zero? Which one? Which one? Which one? Which one? Out of all the dots which I have made inside or on the circle, which one is at the great diametrically opposite one? This guy, yes or no? And this guy is what? This guy is minus seven comma zero, correct? So what is this distance? You say, sir, simple. That distance is six units. So the greatest distance of z from minus one comma zero is going to be six units. That is the greatest value of mod z plus one is six. Isn't it a nice and interesting way to get the same thing? right without using any kind of an inequality and all those mathematical jargons is it fine any questions okay now depending upon the scenario you can use any of the methods of course both the methods have their own advantages many times you will realize the triangle inequality will work geometrical interpretation may be difficult okay and vice versa wherever you feel geometrical interpretation works fine go for it okay now i think i have spent enough time on addition and subtraction we'll talk talk about multiplication and division also they are uh, pending from my side so yes uh, can i move on to the next slide we'll take more questions etu uh, as you know we solve more and more uh, concepts as we learn more and more concepts our questions will incorporate all these okay as of now we'll have to cover a lot of ground actually <laughs> last year i remember we had to you know cover up this chapter in the summers also uh, sorry in the uh, break between your 11th and 12th also it was so big actually so we'll we'll come back don't worry i'll be taking more questions okay meanwhile i'll talk about multiplication of complex numbers okay let's talk about multiplication of complex numbers See when you have two complex numbers a one plus i b one and a two plus i b two, okay, and you multiply them. So multiplication doesn't have any restriction. That means uh, just like addition and subtraction had, multiplication doesn't have any restriction. You can multiply anything with anything. That means real can multiply with real, real can multiply with imaginary, imaginary can multiply with imaginary, and so on. So when you do that operation, you get a one a two. Uh, i'll first write down the real parts whatever i get a1 a2 
and i square v1 v2 i square v1 v2 is minus v1 v2 okay then i will write the imaginary part i a2 b1 and a1 b2 okay so z1 z2 is going to be this now this is a very dry expression i mean it doesn't give us any insight okay it just tells you what is the process of multiplying but beyond that does it help you to locate z1 into z2 where is z1 into z2 located on the argument nothing is evident from here it is it is dry matlab i i didn't uh, i am not happy looking at this somehow matlab it did not give me any insights right so in the point form you realize that the point form importance is only in subtraction and addition when it comes to multiplication division and raising it to any power polar form and euler form they are the kings there i mean you will understand lot of things from the polar form and the euler form notation so i will now do a similar operation but now assuming two complex number in polar form or euler form and then you realize that looking at the answer itself you realize that oh this is what is happening when you are multiplying two complex number so let us you know let us create that o moment okay so now this is a point form operation which i found it very dry i'm sure most of you also found it dry maza nahi aaya dekh ke sir isko isn't it setu maza aaya kya nahi aaya na isko dekh ke so i'll give you some you know better view of of the same same thing <clears throat> so let's now look at the polar or euler form representation okay we'll do the same operation in polar and euler form so let us say my complex number is r1 cis theta1 sir don't write cis and all write fully okay <laughs> okay and in the same thing euler form you can write it like this i hope everybody knows euler form r e to the power i theta theta should be in radians so what you write as r cos theta plus i sin theta same thing can be written in euler form as r e to the power i theta okay so now when you multiply these two complex numbers let us see what happens of course euler form will give you a straight cut you know understanding but even if in the polar form if you do you will get r1 r2 okay now see i'll just follow this expression a1 a2 minus b1 b2 a1 a2 minus b1 b2 will give you cos theta1 cos theta2 minus sin theta1 sin theta2 okay and a2 b1 plus a1 b2 a2 b1 is sin theta1 cos let me write it A two B one is cos theta two sine theta one, and A one B two is sine theta two cos theta one. Correct. Now, if you look at this expression, you'll say, "Oh, I can see this happening." So your product basically shows some important. the product shows some important characteristic here what is the characteristic that i see first thing i see is what happens to the modulus and then i see what happens to the argument so from here two very interesting insights come number 1 if you multiply two complex number you get another complex number whose modulus is r1 r2 which means it is the product of the moduli of the two complex number correct so when two complex numbers multiply the resultant coming out from it or the product coming out from it product is the right word to use the product coming out of it the modulus of that complex number will be the product of the moduli of the two complex numbers which were multiplied right that is insight number 1 Now many people ask me, sir, uh, can we generalize it also? Can we say that? Can we say that mod z1, z2, da 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 till z n? If I multiply, its modulus will be product of the moduli of all these complex numbers. Can I say that? The answer is yes. We can say that. So in general, please note down that when you take the modulus of the product of n complex numbers multiplied. it is as good as the product of the moduli of the complex numbers okay this is number 1 number 
you will also see that the argument of the product is actually the sum of the arguments of z1 and z2 something very uh, similar to what happens in log operation isn't it so when you add uh, sorry when you multiply two complex numbers the resultant complex number or the product that comes out the uh, argument of that product is the sum of the arguments of the two complex numbers which were multiplied right right now subject to the fact that it is between minus pi to pi of course because we are always talking about the principal argument so please please ensure that you keep the result within minus pi to pi now many people say sir what if it exceeds pi tab kya kare right see you already know your trigonometry very well correct write a coterminal angle which is basically having the same answer as that given angle i'll just take an example here let us say uh, let's say uh, argument of z1 was pi by 2 let's say and argument of z2 was let's say 3 pi by 4 right now i ask you hey uh, tell me the principal argument of z1 z2 what will your answer be what will your answer be of course as per the property you will add them correct but when you add them you would realize your answer will overshoot in fact in this case it will become 8 plus 6 uh, sorry uh, 4 plus 6 Ten pi by eight, if I am not wrong, correct. Ten pi by eight is five pi by four, but five pi by four doesn't belong to minus pi to pi, which is supposed to be the range of our principal argument, right? So it doesn't belong to minus pi to pi, correct? So what do you do for this case? See, simple. Five pi by four is this angle, right? Correct. But when I ask, what? Let's say this is your product, z one, z two. so when i ask what is the principal argument you must state this answer are you getting my point you must be stating this answer correct so what is this answer that is what i want to know what is this answer this yellow angle what is that yellow angle this is 5 pi by 4 Right, the yellow angle is minus three pi by four. So you should state your answer as the answer to this question will be minus three pi by four because this is a general argument. You should not not state general argument. You should always state the principal argument, which is this guy. Okay, so please ensure whenever somebody asks you the argument, as a you know a convention, we always give the person the principal argument. Okay, don't give us any. some arbit you know large angle like you know general argument don't want general argument i always want the principal argument how do you conclude the third result oh uh, no yellow yeah, white one is a part of the first one you are talking about the yellow the last one right yeah dikh nahi raha kya this is theta 1 plus theta 2 <laughs> hey, read this this is like r Cos phi, i sin phi. So what is phi? Theta one plus theta two, and phi is supposed to be the argument of the product, whatever complex number has come out as a multiplication end result. So argument of z one into z two is phi, and phi is theta one plus theta two. That's how this result comes. <laughs> no problem, sir. No problem. I think it was an oversight. Is it fine? Any questions? Any other question? now here people ask me sir can we further generalize here can we say that if we have z1 z2 da 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 da, da till zn multiplied the argument of it will be i should write it in white actually because sorry i should have written it in white so it will be rhyming with the previous one yeah so argument of the product of z1 z2 z3 till zn can i say it is the sum of the arguments of z1 yes you can very much say this but again please keep your answer limited to that means restrict your answer to minus pi to pi interval means keep your answer in the principal argument is it fine now this is something which uh, of course comes out from that multiplication result and and one more thing i would like to add here euler gives this in straight one shot Euler is such a strong representation that when you multiply these two, 
it's you directly get R1, R2, E to the power I phi one plus phi two. Uh, sorry, theta one plus theta two. Sorry for saying phi one. So Euler is basically, he was gem of a mathematician. He basically figured out that your resultant complex number or your product will basically have an argument uh, modulus, which is product of the moduli of Z1, Z2. And the argument of the product will be the sum of the arguments of Z1 and Z2. Straight away, one shot, right? Thanks to Euler. Okay, anyways. So this is the mathematical way of looking at the, uh, you can say, uh, the product of two complex numbers. Now, what is happening geometrically? Let us try to understand that. Before that, you want to copy anything, you want to write anything, please do so. Done? Okay. Now see geometrically what is happening. Geometrically speaking, when you multiply a complex number, let's say I start with Z1. Okay. And let's say Euler form or any form you want to write it doesn't make a difference. Let's say Z1 is a complex number, which is R1 e to the power I theta one. Okay. So on the argon plane, where is it located? You'll say, sir, at a distance of R1 from the origin and having an angle of theta one with the positive real, real Z axis. Okay, clear. So this is your location of Z1 point. Now, when you multiply this complex number with another complex number whose argument, is, sorry, whose modulus is R2 and argument is theta two, Right. Let's say you multiply Z1 into Z2 or Z1, Z2 like this. Okay. Then what is the location of this guy? See what is going to happen. This complex number Z1, you rotate it anti-clockwise by theta two angle. So you just rotate this further by theta two angle. Okay. And you scale the modulus by a factor of R2. That means let's say R2, you multiply to this. So it becomes R1, R2. So here is your location of Z1, Z2. Are you getting my point? So what are you doing here? Listen to this concept. Let's say Z1 was at a distance R1 from origin and at an angle theta one. You multiplied Z1 with Z2. Z2 is another complex number whose modulus is R2 and argument is theta2. So how do you locate the product? This is the way to locate the product. Just rotate Z1 complex number by further theta2 anti-clockwise and scale the modulus by factor of R2. Scale up or down that depends on R2. I'm not I cannot comment about up or down, but scale it by a factor of R2. So whatever you do, in fact, uh, in the diagram, it is uh, shown to be longer, but it could be shorter also in reality. Okay, depends on R2. So this is how you locate your Z1 into Z2. So this is the concept which you will, you know, uh, which we call as the rotation concept in complex number. So multiplying one complex number by the other creates a basically a rotation kind of an event. And of course there would be a scaling up or down of the length. So let me write this phenomena in English so that you can refer to your notes a little later on. So when Z1 is multiplied to Z2, when Z1 is multiplied to Z2, the following things happen, okay? rotate Z1 by argument of Z2 anti-clockwise 
anti clockwise and scale modulus of z1 i mean so much english is also not good uh, and scale modulus of z1 i could have used this notation by factor of modulus z2 and by doing this z1 z2 is located and thereby and thereby obtain location of z1 z2 this is very very important if you understand this many of the future concepts will be easy for you to understand okay let's take a, a small quick example also on the same let us say i had a complex number 2 e to the power i pi by 6 okay i mean i can write it in polar form i can write it in point form but this is just a you know euler form which makes us draw the complex number very easily so let us say it is located at a distance of 2 from the origin and pi by 6 is the angle so 30 degrees okay i take another complex number let's say um, 3 i pi by 3 okay and i am multiplying these two complex numbers so can you tell me where will be z1 into z2 located don't multiply it literally just tell me looking at this figures looking at the figures that i have written in these two complex numbers what will happen to obtain or what should you do to obtain z1 into z2 location so first you will say sir rotate this guy z1 by how much by how many degrees see by argument of z2 anti clockwise so argument of z2 here is how much pi by 3 so rotate it pi by 3 anti clockwise means 60 degrees by the way when you rotate it 60 degrees you will come on this line okay exactly on the imaginary z axis okay this is your imaginary z axis and what do you do you change the modulus of z1 by a factor of modulus of z2 modulus of z2 is 3 so 2 into 3 six times so this length will become 6 so just choose a point which is at a distance of 6 okay so this distance is 6 okay and on the imaginary z axis so by the way you have reached a point which is 6i by the way okay so product of these two will actually give you a 6i you can check it out also by actually multiplying it so 6 e to the power i pi by 3 plus pi by 2 sorry pi by 6 plus pi by 3 that is going to be 6i pi by 2 6i pi by 2 is actually 6i is it fine any questions now coming back to this figure another important thing we'll be discussing there first note down anything that you want to uh if you ask that question i will ask you a counter question how do you write this in polar form how what is 6i in polar form that means if you write it as r cos theta i sin theta what is theta and what is r in short i am asking you what is modulus of 6i and what is argument of 6i r is 6 okay now the same thing you have actually answered your own question the same thing if you write want to write in a polar form uh, euler form what do you write r e to the power i argument that's what was here so it became 6i <laughs> means i think the con conversion between polar to euler is not that clear as of now kuch nahi karna hai nothing you know the modulus you know the argument right so r e to the power i theta that's the euler form representation but of course write your theta in radians don't write i 90 that will be wrong okay 
there is some you know convergence scenario that is going to be should be satisfied i don't want to get into that okay now see everybody uh, let's go to this diagram this is a very important uh, phenomena that i would like to point out <clears throat> let me make two triangles over here one is your triangle let me name it o okay uh and let's say this is z2 and let me name it as b okay so this is your a point z2 is your b point and this is your c point okay if i make triangles like this all of you please watch out for these triangles okay if i make triangles like this this is your theta 2 by the way or let me make a fresh diagram because this figure is slightly cluttered mm, where should i make it okay let me make make the diagram here this is your ayo this is your r1 this is your theta1 this is your r2 r2 and this is your theta2 okay so basically i have shown you the location of z1 let's call it as a z2 let's call it as b okay and i had also drawn for you uh, let me use gray line okay this this length is r1 r2 and this whole angle is theta 1 plus theta 2 so by the way all of you please pay attention if this whole angle is theta 1 plus theta 2 and this is already theta 2 so can i say only this part if i make this will be theta 1 correct no so this was your location of z1 z2 let me call it as c point okay now let me construct a triangle over here one is this triangle the triangle o c b and another triangle is this triangle o a p now p is a point which is actually 1 comma 0 okay now comment upon comment upon the nature of these two triangles how is triangle o c b and triangle o a p o c b o c b o c b as you can see my cursor is dancing on it o c b and o a p how are these two triangles related to each other can somebody tell me looking at it only lot of things will be clear they are similar right correct how can you say it is similar sir very easily we can say if the, uh, this is theta 1 as you can see yellow angle here theta 1 and this is also theta 1 so these two angles are same first of all and if you take the ratio of let's say oc by ob okay this ratio will come out to be r1 r2 by r2 which is r1 this is same as the ratio between oa by op which is r1 by 1 same correct that means the sides are also proportional so when sides are proportional and these ang this angle is basically common angle that is theta 1 theta 1 in both the places that means these two triangles will be uh, similar to each other and this itself has been asked as a question in the comparative exam right so they will say this is the location of z1 this is the location of z2 this is the location of z1 z2 this is the location of 1 comma 0 you make a triangle like this like this like this what is the relationship between these two triangles one of the option will be they are similar to each other 
Okay. And you have to mark that option. You have to choose that option. So please note this down. If you make two triangles, one connecting O Z one and the complex number one and the second triangle by connecting O Z one, Z two and Z two, the two triangles that will be formed will be similar to each other. Is it fine? Any questions, any concerns? So, so deeply they go to the concept of multiplication. Do you see that they've made triangles. They've asked you the nature of the, uh, the, you know, triangles also. So it is not just about learning these operations in a dry fashion. You have to analyze things. Okay. You have to analyze and challenge your learning. Now. Let's say a J advanced aspirant, they can make a question like, okay, what will be the ratio of the areas of the two triangle? Something like that can be framed, right? So all those things, tricky things can be framed. Is this fine? Any uh, problem with respect to addition, uh, sorry, multiplication of complex numbers. Out of all the things which I have discussed, I would like you to take this thing very, very seriously. Okay. Very, very important. The concept of rotation in, in complex numbers is very heavily asked. So if you're done with this, can I uh, now move on to the division of complex numbers? So we have to cover division. We have to cover the concept of conjugate. We have to cover the concept of uh, logarithms. We have to cover the concept of powers. So everything has to be done by today. So let's see whether we are able to complete. So I'm now moving on to the next slide where I'll be talking about division of complex numbers, division of division of complex numbers or quotient of complex numbers. So when you divide one complex number, let's say a one plus I B one by another complex number, a two plus I B two, what happens? Okay. So when you divide one complex number by another complex number, you end up getting another complex number. Let's say that complex number is a three plus I B three. Now, normally when we divide complex numbers uh, and we get a complex number, we leave the answer as a three plus IB three form rather than leaving it in a very raw stage like this. So many times a question itself comes, what is a three and B three in terms of a one B one a two B two. Okay. So in order to obtain that, you need to do a small operation. Uh, that operation is you have to multiply your denominator and numerator with a term which is very similar to the term in the denominator, just that I is written as a minus I. Okay. By the way, <laughs> many people use the wrong word here. So sir, you mean to say you are rationalizing the denominator? No, my dear. <laughs> Don't use the word rationalization here. This is not an irrational term that I'm making it as a rational. Rationalization word means you are making an irrational term into a rational term by multiplying it with something. I'm not converting an irrational to a rational. Okay. In school also, I've seen many, many teachers and many trainers use the wrong word. You are rationalizing that enough. This is not an irrational term. This is a complex number, right? <laughs> the right word is you are realizing the denominator. <laughs> realizing the denominator. What is this? Sir? Yes. You're actually making it real. See how. If you multiply with this number in the denominator, you will see you get a two square minus I B two square. Correct. If you expand it, you get a two square minus I square. I square is minus one itself B two square, which is actually a two square plus B two square, which is completely real term. So you can see the, you can use the word. You are realizing the denominator. <laughs> Now, English word realizing that is what we are using here. You are realizing it, we are making it real. Okay. So here by multiplying it with this complex number, you are realizing the denominator. By the way, this complex number is actually called, you would have already learned it in school. This is called the conjugate of a two plus I B two. So you are multiplying the denominator with its conjugate. Now there's a separate subtopic of conjugate that I will talk in some time, not to worry. 
All right. Meanwhile, having taken care of my denominator, let us look into our numerator term. Numerator term is basically a plain and simple, I would say, a dry multiplication operation. Let us do that. A1, A2. Uh, IB1 minus IB2 will give you plus IB1, B2. And uh, the imaginary parts would be, uh, if I'm not mistaken, A2, B1 minus A1, B2. Okay. Now your denominator is already, I will, I will rewrite this as denominator is already denominator is already a2 square plus b2 square. So divide it individually. So if you divide it individually, you get a1, a2 plus b1, b2 upon a2 square, b2 square, i, a2, b1 minus a1, b2 upon a2 square, b2 square. Okay. So this becomes your a3 and this becomes your b3. Okay. So if somebody says, uh, write down this uh, division as a complex number, then this is what you need to do in order to write it as a A3 plus IB3 or let's say A plus IB form. Okay. But this is good for an operation point of view. It doesn't give you any insight. It is a dry, op dry operation. I mean, it's just a, you can say mindless operation that you're not applying any mind, just doing it and getting your complex number. What we are interested in or what competitive exams are interested in in knowing whether you are geometrically able to see what is happening when one complex number is divided by another complex number. Okay. So we'll start that analysis analysis in some time, but before that, you please make a note of this. Yeah. Any question, anybody? I think somebody's mic was on. Okay, so this is just an op for operation point of view. This is good, but this doesn't give us any insight. Dry, dry operation. <laughs> All right. So let us now try to understand the same operation when you write the two complex number in either polar form or Euler form. So when you write it in polar form, okay, or let's say Euler form. Then you will understand the real meaning of division. What is actually happening when you're dividing it? In fact, I will not uh, waste too much time doing the same process. I will just use my, I will just use my Euler form notation. Euler form rotation is super fast. So Euler form says that, Hey, if you're dividing one complex number by another complex number, this is what you are going to see. Okay. That means if you write the same result in a polar form, you are going to see something like this. Now looking at this, I get a lot of ideas. This is insightful. This tells me two things. What are those two things? I would like to hear from you. What are the two insights that we carry from here? When you multi, when you divide one complex by the another, you get another complex number whose modulus is R1 by R2, which is modulus of Z1 by modulus of Z2. Now this is a very, very important property. This says that when you divide one complex number by the other, and you are finding the modulus of the quotient, it is as good as quotient of the moduli of the two complex numbers, right? Now there was a case where, uh, you know, this question was asked in school. I, I don't know exactly which of the NPS it was asked. The question was asked, find the modulus of three plus four I divided by five minus 12 I. Okay. And the student wasted, I, I would not like to name the student, he, you know, uh, long back, I think two or three years back, he wasted good five, uh, two to three minutes converting it into a complex number as a plus IB form. And then he started finding the mo uh, modulus of that. No need to do that. Don't waste your time finding this as a single complex number, right? You can directly use this result and say, oh, the answer to this will be just modulus of this by modulus of this over. That's it. Five by 13. Finish it off. End of the game. 
don't unnecessarily convert this to a single complex number and then find its uh, modulus by doing under root a square plus b square. Don't waste your time. Time is very important, especially in competitive exams. Are you getting my point? Same is true for Z1 into Z2 modulus. So Z1 into Z2, if you're multiplying it, don't waste time multiplying it if you want to find out the modulus of the product. Just take their moduli individually, multiply it over, game is over. Don't convert it to a single complex number and then find its uh, you know, modulus. Are you getting my point? Is it clear? The second uh, takeaway from here is that argument of Z1 by Z2, as you can see from here, okay, is theta one minus theta two, which is nothing but the difference of the arguments of Z1 and Z2. Of course, difference here is uh, not an exact word here. It's argument Z1 minus argument Z2. That means whatever is on the numerator, that argument should be taken first minus whatever is the denominator, that argument should be taken next. Okay, of course. Please ensure that the result that you get is between minus pi to pi because you always want to state a principal argument of any complex number. Is it fine? Any questions here? Any questions? Please note down. Now we'll also see geometrically what is happening when you divide one complex by the other. By the way, looking at these two expressions, you must have got an idea for that as well. done anything that you would like to ask or know from this page do let me know okay so geometrically speaking what is happening see when you have a complex number let me make a diagram let's say z1 z1 is here okay and z1 is let's say uh, you know i'll just write it over here Z1 is let's say R1 e to the power i theta 1. That means this length, this length is R1. And this angle is theta 1. Okay. You are dividing it by another complex number whose modulus is R2 and argument is theta 2. Then where is Z1 by Z2 located and how would you locate it? Okay. Now, when you look at the final expression, it is R1 by R2 cos theta 1 minus theta 2 plus I sine theta 1 minus theta 2. That means what is happening here is that you take this complex number Z1, rotate it clockwise by how much? Theta 2. Correct? So take that complex number, rotate it by how much? by theta 2, which is the argument of Z2, and then scale the modulus of that by a factor of 1 by R2. Okay, so what are you doing? You are first rotating this guy by an angle of theta 2. Hey, where is the same R coming from? Yeah. Okay, so rotate it by an angle of theta 2, and then you change your, then you change your modulus by a factor of R2. That means this will be R1 by R2, right? Are you getting my point? So if you obtain, you know, if you reach this point, this point will be your Z1 divided by Z2. Are you getting what are you doing? So you are rotating just exactly opposite of what you used to do in multiplication. In multiplication, you used to rotate it theta to clockwise, uh, anti-clockwise, correct? And then you used to scale the modulus by a factor of R2. Here, what are you going to do? You're rotating it by theta to clockwise and scaling it by a factor of 1 by R2. 
Make sense? Should I write that down also? Okay. So for this complex number, rotate, rotate Z one by by argument of Z two clockwise and scale modulus of Z one by factor of one by modulus Z two. When you do that, you end up locating your Z one by Z two complex number. Is it clear? So this is also like a kind of a rotation, but of course the direction and the scaling, uh, you know, factors are different. Okay. So this is very very important. Okay. Now one more geometrical interpretation we will be talking about once you have copied this diagram. Uh, once you have copied this scenario. and then we'll take some questions based on the same followed by a break okay now another interesting insight that we should all have here uh, maybe i will draw it to the Ah, huh, of course. Length of any complex number, uh, length means the distance of that complex number from the origin will be mod of that complex number. So if you're talking about this length, it's r one by r two only, no? R one by r two is mod. Yeah. Okay. Now see, very important. Let me make the diagram once again. Let's say this was your z one location. Okay. And this is the modulus of z1 this is the argument of z okay and let us say this is z2 location okay this length is r2 this angle is theta2 okay and let us say this is the location of let me use a blue color this is the location of z1 by z2 okay let me call it as o mm, o a b and c okay now if you complete a triangle if you make two triangles like this one is like this and other is like this okay where this point is your point 1 comma 0 okay now please note that while rotating it you rotated it by an angle of theta 2 okay so this is theta 2 So, what can you comment about triangle OAC and triangle OBP? They are they are similar yet again. Okay, and you can check it out. How checking is very easy. This is theta two. This is also theta two, as per the diagram. And if you do OA by OC, or if you do OA by OC, you'll end up getting OA. OA is R one. OC is R one by R two, so R two will go up. So OA by OC is giving you R two. Similarly, if you do OB by OP, OB by OP, you will get R two by one, which is the same as R two. Okay, so both will give you the same result. That means not only the angle, but even the sides are proportional. Angles are equal and sides are proportional, which means these two triangles are similar. And you may be asked a question related to this in the competitive exam. See <laughs> why p comma why is taken as one comma zero is because in order to make this as a similar triangle to this you have to have this length as a unity. That is why we have taken one comma zero. Many students ask me this question. So why all of a sudden you have taken a point one comma zero? Because then only triangle OBP and OAC will be similar to each other. So if you want to 
you know create a similar triangle to a b o a c you have to take the point o b p p being 1 comma 0 so think in a other way direction uh, tejasvin so let us say had i asked you the question that make a triangle which is similar to o b p sorry o a c and having one of the sides as o b then you will definitely choose another side as o p and make a triangle like the triangle o b p okay so construction wise you have to choose the point to be like that then only you can make a you do a reverse activity you do a reverse activity see let me just write it down here if i say if i say make a triangle make a triangle obp which is similar to triangle oac okay there is already theta 2 here correct and there is already theta 2 here so you need to choose this point right so the point has to be on the real z axis let's say i don't know this point okay for the time being i'll call it as uh, you can say a comma 0 correct so as per the proportionality thing you will have o ob by op equal to oa by oc ob is r2 op i do not know as of now so i'll put an a oa is r1 oc is r1 by r2 so r1 by r2 r2 will go on top right so r2 by a is r2 so what should be your a one only so this point should have been 1 comma 0 so indirectly you think you will get your answer okay what should be your point p that is why while i was drawing the diagram i already told you that if i take that point to be 1 comma 0 then the triangles would be similar or vice versa if the triangles are to be similar then that point has to be 1 comma 0 any way you want to read the same statement it's your call okay good so let's take some questions let's take some questions okay i have a very simple question over here maybe all of you would have done lot of these questions in school exam but still let us do it again after this question setu i'll go back to the figure once again if you have drawn a figure on your notebook just read the figure once again when you divide what do you do you rotate it clockwise by theta 2 only no as per my operation i came to know that argument is theta 1 minus theta 2 so theta 1 has to be diminished by theta 2 so there would be a clockwise rotation of theta 2 from there it became theta 2 see geometrically has come from that operation only when you did that operation z1 by z2 what is the end result you got r1 by r2 cos theta 1 minus theta 2 plus i sin theta 1 minus theta 2 so argument became theta 1 minus theta 2 so in order to locate my r uh, z1 by z2 i had to reduce theta 1 by how much theta 2 so that reduction is like taken as a anti clockwise motion by theta 2 got it so when i did that i realized on the diagram that basically that angle becomes theta 2 in there clear all right so please solve this question and let me know your values for x and y okay nikhil
Prashim is getting a different answer. Anybody else? I don't think so. You should be finding these kind of uh, problems difficult to solve. See, as I told you, the process you have to follow multiply with the conjugate of the denominator. Okay. So in the first expression, which is this expression, I have done the same. Do a similar activity with the other one as well. Multiply this with the conjugate so that we realize that term. Okay. So basically realize the denominator here for both of these expressions. So on the denominator here, it will give you 10. See, don't waste time calculating this. This will be 10 for both the cases. It will be a square plus b square. a is 3, b is 1. Okay. So, uh, what do you have on the numerator is, uh, I will just write it down uh, in real terms. So, 3x plus 3. This will be 3x minus 3 and minus i x minus 3. So, 3x minus 3 and minus x x minus 3. And this will be 3y minus 3 plus i y minus 3. Okay. This is equal to i. In short, basically you end up getting something like this. Am I right? I've taken the LCM of 10 and 10 I have sent it to the right side. And this is what we see. Now, please pay attention here. Here you have to use your comparison of complex numbers. So there are two complex numbers. Okay. This is one complex number and this is another complex number. By the way, 10 I, I will I'll write it in a slightly fancy way, zero plus 10 I. So this is another complex number. So when you're comparing two complex numbers, real will be compared with the real. That means this will be compared to zero. And this operation, which is uh, supposedly giving me only Y minus X, this will be compared to 10. Okay. So from this operation, I get X plus Y is equal to six. And from this operation, I get minus X plus Y is equal to 10. Add it. So Y is a eight. Anybody who said Y is eight. Absolutely correct. And if Y is eight, X is minus two. So your answer to this question is correct. Setu. Correct. I think uh, the first one to get this right was Nikhil. Nikhil got it right. So X is minus two. Y is eight. Is it fine? Any questions? Simple. I mean, this is a typical school level complex number question. So this is how your question will be framed in school exams. Can I move on to the next one? Okay, we'll take this question. Oh, I think I've not done conjugate. <laughs> Sorry, I have not done conjugate with you, right? If mod Z1 is equal to mod Z2 and argument of Z1 by Z2 is pi, find the value of Z1 plus Z2.
very good noel if you if you read this expression as geometrical interpretation this question is just 10 second question 10 seconds not more than that so these two scenarios just imagine in your mind <laughs> right nikhil absolutely right just imagine this in your mind you will get your answer like this click of the finger correct fisher <laughs> see is uh, let me just take a scenario okay i will take up two complex numbers which meet both the situations one mod z1 is equal to mod z2 which means the distance of both the complex numbers from the origin is equal correct second the argument of z1 minus argument of z2 please note that argument of z1 by z2 as we have already seen is difference is argument of z1 by z2 is seen as a difference of argument of z1 minus argument of z2 and this is pi so let us say if this angle let's say this is z1 and this angle is the argument of z1 then z2 is first of all at a difference of pi from here that means this will be theta 2 of course and this distance is same that means this distance and this distance are same right they are asking you what is the sum of these two complex numbers by the way if this is your a comma b then this point must be minus a minus b so when you add two complex numbers z1 z2 here you'll end up getting zero nothing else a1 minus a1 and b1 minus b1 uh, sorry b minus b they will cancel each other out okay it's a simple you know question if you look at it from geometrical point of view so wherever possible i would encourage you all to look at it from geometrical angle correct now see if let's say geometrically you don't want to solve you want to solve it for let's say a school level question so this is how you solve it so uh, this is your geometrical way of thinking of it geometrically i would say non geometrically non geometrically if you want to solve it let us say a modulus z1 and modulus of z2 are same and this is equal to r okay and let argument of z1 be theta okay let's say now as per this relation argument z1 by z2 which is argument of z1 minus argument of z2 okay if this is theta and let's say this is any unknown angle let's say phi let's say argument z2 is phi then you have been given that phi is pi minus or theta minus pi correct correct so from here we can interpret that phi is theta minus pi correct now let us say i want to construct my z2 so i will require modulus which is r itself and i would require argument which is phi as per my assumption but phi is what phi is theta minus pi correct if you write it down properly this is as good as cos pi minus theta cos pi minus theta is minus cos theta and this is minus i sin pi minus theta which is actually sin theta in short you have written negative of r cos theta plus i sin theta am i right isn't it isn't it isn't this negative of z1 
because z1 is having modulus of r and argument as theta so it is negative z1 so you are saying z2 is negative z1 so what should be z1 plus z2 zero only no isn't this a longer way to solve the question when you can solve it in quick time by using your geometrical idea right anyway so i have given you both the options geometrically non geometrically whichever you feel suits you and depends on situation also many a times geometrically may not be very you know nice way to solve it or may not be a efficient way to solve it so both the options you should keep open whichever is lesser time taking take that approach we'll take a break here right now uh, right now 617 is the time as per my watch we will meet exactly at 632 pm okay see you on the other side of the break so the next uh, topic that we are going to talk about in fact sub topic that we are going to talk about is actually the conjugate of a complex number conjugate of a complex number okay conjugate of a complex number you can actually call it as a type an operation only okay so you can actually find the conjugate of any complex number let's say a plus ib by reversing the sign of i so i will become minus i in this case and this complex number is called the conjugate of the complex number z in fact both are conjugates of each other both are conjugates of each other conjugates of each other okay in many books in fact uh, in international books they will write conjugate as z star in fact ib board they will write it as z star okay so how do you obtain a conjugate of a complex number just by changing the sign of i with a minus i that's it okay so change change i with a minus i okay that's how you end up getting conjugate of a complex number few examples to cite over here let's say if you have 3 plus 4i its conjugate will be 3 3 i don't Minus four i absolutely. If you have a complex number, let's say three um, i plus two, what is the conjugate of this? Write down, write down, write down, write down in the chat box. Anybody? Minus three i plus two. Right. I was actually waiting to see somebody writing three i minus two. <laughs> so many people think finding conjugate is just reversing the sign in between no it is not reversing the sign in between it is changing i with a minus i okay now let us see geometrically where is the conjugate of a complex number actually located so if let's say your complex number is a plus ib okay its conjugate is a minus ib means as a point if you write it it should be at a comma minus b location so if somebody asks If you want to make a point a comma b as a comma minus b, what do you do with that point? You say, sir, simple. I would reflect that point about the real z-axis. Okay. If you reflect it about the real z-axis, you'll end up getting the conjugate, which is a comma minus b location. Okay. Now, an additional information I am giving you: if you reflect it about the imaginary z-axis, you will get a negative of z conjugate. Okay. Please note that. so if you want to change the sign of x you have to do negative z conjugate okay that will give you the reflection about the imaginary z axis is this fine so what is the conjugate of a complex number it is clear so if the complex number is located in the second quadrant its conjugate will be in the third if it is located in the third quadrant its conjugate will be in the second if it is located in the fourth quadrant its conjugate will be in the first if it is located in the first quadrant Quad, uh, the conjugate will be in the fourth so wherever it is located you just have to reflect that particular point about the real z axis that will give you the location of its conjugate okay now certain properties of conjugate properties of conjugate that is very very important let's talk about it the first property is if you conjugate a complex number twice it will give you the same complex number back which is very obvious isn't it if you reflect a point about x axis and then again sorry real z axis and again reflect it about the real z axis back you will get the same point isn't it 
second thing that you will observe here is that modulus of the conjugate and modulus of the complex number will be the same that means the distance of z from origin okay whatever is this distance and the distance of z conjugate from the origin that means this distance they will be the same correct of course mirror image sim, uh, congruent triangles will be formed okay if you connect if you directly connect this okay so please note this down and also you can look at it from your uh, expression point of view also so if z is this its modulus will be under root a square plus b square if z conjugate is this its modulus will be again under root a square plus b square <clears throat> okay both are same so please note this down third thing is argument of a conjugate is negative of the argument of that complex numbers so if you see this is if this angle is theta this angle will be negative of that okay and both will be negatives of each other so the argument of a complex number and its conjugate i'm talking about principal argument and always i'll be talking about principal argument unless until stated otherwise so argument of a complex number and its conjugate will always be opposite in sign no matter whichever quadrant it, the complex number lies on okay even if it doesn't lie on a quadrant means if it lies on real x axis real z axis or imaginary z axis still this property is going to be true okay no doubt next if you do the operation of some or difference of two complex numbers and you take its conjugate it is as good as doing the same operation on the conjugates themselves okay so if you add two complex numbers or subtract two complex numbers and take the conjugate of the result it is as good as you are doing the same operation on the conjugates okay same goes with product okay and same goes with quotient okay so conjugate of z1 into z2 is same as z1 conjugate into z2 conjugate and z1 by z2 whole conjugate is same as z1 conjugate by z2 conjugate next property i hope you have all copied till 6th i hope it is visible yeah next property if you add a complex number to its conjugate it will always give you twice the real part of z this is very obvious because if you add a plus ib and a minus ib don't you get 2a correct 2a is what two real part of z only no okay now there is a very interesting corollary which is related to this the corollary says that if you add two complex numbers and it gives you zero that means z plus z conjugate gives you zero that means the complex number is purely imaginary okay so when a complex number added to its conjugate gives you a zero it means the complex number z was purely imaginary it means it did not have any real part okay it directly comes from this property itself that uh, two real z is zero means real z is zero that means there is no real part only imaginary part is there that means i lambda kind of a complex number that number would be okay similarly similarly if z minus z conjugate is done it will give you i twice imaginary part of z okay z minus z conjugate will give you i twice imaginary part of z okay obviously a plus ib minus a minus ib will give you 2 ib or you can say i twice of b which is i twice of imaginary part of z b is the imaginary part of z remember a is the real part of z 
so a corollary also here comes up that if z plus z conjugate sorry z minus z conjugate is zero that means z is equal to z conjugate that means the complex number is purely real this is a very these two uh, you know you can say inferences that we have drawn from it they are very very useful in solving many questions please make a note of this okay last but not the least z multiplied with its conjugate will always give you mod of z square will always give you mod of z square not z square please don't get me wrong here i'm not saying z square z square mod z square are two different things now last uh, class i was having with rajaji nagar there was a student who thought that z square and mod z square means the same thing <laughs> no definitely not unless until z is purely real <laughs> okay so they are different things z square when you say let's say z is a plus ib let us say z is a plus ib if you do z square you'll get a square minus b square plus i to ab but mod z square is just a square plus b square they are different things very different one is a complex number while other is i mean one is a, a complex number may have may have imaginary part to it but the other is actually purely real this is purely real this is a complex number okay please do not confuse between z square and mod z square very very important let me make a cloud <laughs> okay this is a very important property and you will see it uh, you know used in many many questions okay a lot of questions have been framed on this property so i hope all of you have noted down uh, all these nine properties and uh, we will be applying these properties in solving many questions especially the ninth one as i told you last but not the least it's the most important property which comes handy while solving many questions done should i move on to the questions now okay uh let's start with this question okay let's take this question If z one and z two are two complex numbers such that z one minus two z two upon two minus z one into z two conjugate is unimodular. Now, what is unimodular? Unimodular means modulus is one. That is to say, if you take the modulus of this complex number, this is one. Okay. while z2 is not unimodular that means z2 is not unimodular you have to find what is modulus of z1 okay so you need to find out modulus z1 from i would request you to solve this question and give me a response on the chat box
Okay, uh, let me also help you out with this. See, this is as good as saying modulus of z1 minus 2 z2 divided by modulus of 2 minus z1 z2 conjugate is equal to 1. Okay, that means modulus z1 minus 2 z2 is equal to modulus of 2 minus z1 z2 conjugate. Okay, now what do I do with this? I mean, this is just a dead end, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now square both the sides. Okay. Now everybody recall the last property, which we did. Please recall in the last property, I had said mod Z square is nothing but Z into its conjugate, isn't it? So can I say a similar situation has arisen over here where you have squared the modulus of some complex number. So can I say, the left hand side expression, I can write it as z1 minus 2 z2 times z1 minus 2 z2 conjugate. Correct. Similarly, sorry, forgot the square here. Similarly, here also it's 2 minus z1 z2 conjugate times 2 minus z1 z2 conjugate whole conjugate. Okay. Now just expand it. In fact, Conjugate property, I can use further to write it as Z1 conjugate minus 2 Z2 conjugate. This is 2 minus Z1 Z2 conjugate and this is nothing but 2 minus. Now, remember, if you do a conjugate on 2, it will remain a 2 because 2 is purely real. Correct. So when a complex number is purely real, Z and Z conjugate are same things. So there's no point doing a conjugate on 2 because it will remain a 2. Whereas conjugate of this will give you this. Am I right? So it will give you Z1 conjugate and Z2 conjugate conjugate, which is Z2 itself. Correct. Here also, if you see, I did not write a conjugate over two because two is a purely real number. Now let us expand it. So if you expand it, you get Z1, Z1 conjugate, which is nothing but mod Z1 square you'll end up getting minus 2 Z1 conjugate Z2 minus 2 Z1 Z2 conjugate plus 4 mod Z2 square. Here also you get 4 plus uh, mod Z1 square mod Z2 square and minus 2 Z1 Z2 conjugate minus 2 Z1 Z2, Z1 conjugate Z2. Okay, just multiply. A lot of terms I think will be cancelled off. I think this gets cancelled with this this gets cancelled with this. Is this fine? Let's take everything to the left hand side. So mod Z1 square minus mod Z1 square mod Z2 square plus four uh, mod Z2 square minus one. In fact, I can take uh, minus Z1 square common from here also, right? So that will give me mod Z2 square minus one. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, take mod Z2 square minus one common and you'll end up getting four minus mod Z1 square. Okay, so this gives you two possibilities. Either your mod Z2 square is one, which means mod Z2 equal to one. But this is not possible because the question setter it's, uh, himself has mentioned that Z2 is not unimodular, isn't it? Yes or no? So this is not possible. What is possible? The second possibility that four minus mod Z1 square is zero. That means Z1 square is four. In short, you sorry. In short, mod Z1 is two. In short, mod Z1 is two. This is what you wanted to find out. This is your answer. And one, one important thing, in fact, it may sound very trivial. Please do not write plus minus two in such cases because modulus of a complex number cannot be negative two. Okay. Please do not write plus minus two. It is always positive. Is this fine? So as you can see here, a lot of properties of conjugate came into, you know, being, and, uh, you know, we use all those, uh, 
conjugate properties to solve it. Please note this down and do let me know if you have any concerns about any part of the solution. Good enough. Any questions? Can we take one more question? Okay, let's take one more question. Okay, let's take this one. This is a very interesting type of question, which is asked in various shapes and sizes. So here, this question says modulus of Z one is one modulus of Z two is two modulus of Z three is three and modulus of nine Z one Z two plus four Z three Z one plus Z two Z three is equal to six. Find the modulus of Z one plus Z two plus Z three. Yes, anybody with any success?
Okay, Nikhil. Good try. Anybody else? Okay, let's try this out. See, uh, I have been provided with this information. Okay. And I need to reach out to this information. How will I reach out to this information? Okay, now let's see. Can I do one thing over here? Can I pull out within this, uh, you know, modular symbol? Z1, Z2, Z3 out. So when I pull out uh, Z1, Z2, Z3 out from each of these terms, you will see that you will be left with 9 by Z3, 4 by Z2, 1 by Z1. Correct? Correct. And this is like two complex numbers multiplied, right? So can I write it separately as modulus of this and modulus of it, this? Okay. Now here I'm slightly stuck. What to do next? Okay. That would be an obvious concern. What to do next from here on. Now, all of you, please pay attention. We have not utilized the fact that we have been given the modulus of each of these complex numbers. So mod Z1 is given to us as one, which means mod Z1 square is also one. Okay. Mod Z2 is given to me as a two. So mod Z2 square is given to me as a four. So normally these numbers one, four, and of course nine as well. Can I connect it to something? You say, obviously we can write this as Z, Z1 conjugate. This is Z2, Z, Z2, Z2 conjugate. This is Z3, Z3 conjugate by the very property. So I can say one by Z one is Z one conjugate four by Z two is Z two conjugate and nine by Z three is Z three conjugate. So can I say, can I say this term nine by Z three is actually Z three conjugate. This term four by Z two is actually Z two conjugate. And this one by Z one is actually Z one conjugate. Correct. This is given to me as six. Right now, let us try to use our modulus and conjugate properties in combination. This term, I, I can write it as mod Z1, mod Z2, mod Z3. This is conjugate of this whole thing. Am I right? Remember, I told you when you add two complex numbers or subtract two complex numbers and take a conjugate of the whole, it is as good as adding their conjugates or subtracting their conjugates. It depends upon the operation. Correct. Now recall here one more property that modulus of a complex number and modulus of its conjugate are same thing. So can I not write this as modulus of just Z1, Z2, Z3? Now out of this, this is one, this is two, this is three, and this is unknown. So I have to find this out. This is my requirement. So from here I can say, modulus of Z1, Z2, Z3 is going to be six by six, which is a one. So your answer in this question, the answer to this question is one. Nikhil got it. I think Nikhil was the, the only person to get this right. This is a very, very commonly asked question in CET, Comet K, Bitsat, Manipal, J E Main. J E Main actually it is easy for J E Main standard, but in fact, many school also will ask these questions. Is it fine? Any question, any concerns, please have a look at it and let me know if you want me to explain any part of this solution once again. How did I remove conduit? See, we have already known this property, no, uh, say to this and this means the same thing, isn't it? So it's quick treat this as a single complex number, the conjugate of it modulus and the same complex number modulus should give me the same result. That's how I removed it.
ser? All right, everybody is convinced? Okay. So next operation that we are going to talk about is how to find square roots of a complex number. Okay. This is also a very interesting operation. And this is asked in school many a times. So a uh, square root of a complex number gives you another complex number, but there will be two answers coming out. So two answers will come out from it. Now, unlike in case of real numbers, when you had under root of a real number, you only state the real solution. But in case of complex numbers, we state two solutions. So both the square roots will be mentioned. There's nothing like principal square root and non-principal square root for complex numbers. Okay. So Setu, this is the only place where you can write plus minus both. <laughs> okay. So we'll be talking about how to find out the square roots, square roots. See the name of the topic, square roots of complex numbers. Okay. Now, this is something which I would like to explain with an example. Okay. Let's say I want to find out square root of uh, 4 plus 3i. Okay. And let's say the square root of this complex number is x plus i y. Now, by the way, many people ask me, sir, you said two answers will come out, but you have only assumed it to be 1 x plus i y. See, don't worry. X and Y can have changing values or different values, and hence you will get multiple answers. Don't worry about that. Okay. Like there's no point taking two separate values when both the values will come from the same assumption. Okay. So let's say under root of 4 plus 3i is X plus IY. Right. Now see the steps. The steps are very important. This is what you need to follow when you're solving questions. Square both the sides. Okay. So when you square both the sides, this will become X square. Now I've already squared a complex number a little while ago for you when I was trying to say that Z square and mod Z square are different things. So there you get X square plus I Y whole square. I Y whole square is minus Y square plus two X I Y, which is I into two X Y. Okay. Now here it is a case where you are comparing these two complex numbers. So when you compare two complex numbers, remember the very first thing that we did today, the real parts will be equal and their imaginary parts will be equal. So you can say four is X square minus Y square and three is two X Y. Okay. <coughs> now from here, I can say, I have to find my X and Y, how to find my X and Y. Now there are various routes. One route is uh, many people write Y in terms of X and they substitute in the first one. They get a bi-quadratic in X and they find their values of X on there and hence Y value. But that route is slightly tedious many a times. So there's an interesting methodology which we adopt to make this process simple. Recall in your childhood days, you would have done this property. A plus B the whole square is A minus B the whole square plus 4AB. Have you all done this property before? Identity before? Yes, sir. I think in class 7th or 8th only you would have done it, isn't it? So I'm planning to use the same over here by taking my A as an X square and B as a Y square. So see what I'm going to do. Can I say X square plus Y square whole square is X square minus Y square whole square plus 4 X square Y square. In short, you're trying to say that X square plus Y square the whole square is x square minus y square whole square plus 2xy the whole square, isn't it? Now, from the given expression over here, can I say x square minus y square will be 4 square and 2xy the whole square is 3 square, right? In short, it is 25. So what is your x square plus y square value? Can somebody write this down on the chat box? What is X square plus Y square value if X square plus Y square whole square is 25?
सिंपल क्वेश्चन एल के जी लेवल मॉन्टिसरी लेवल क्वेश्चन अरुण दत्ती करेक्ट इट जस्ट फाइव डोंट से प्लस माइनस फाइव वाई एम नॉट प्लस माइनस फाइव वाई नॉट माइनस फाइव How can square of two real numbers give you minus five? It can never happen. Remember x and y that you are using in your expression. They are ultimately real numbers. Square of two real numbers cannot give you negative five. Right? Now, having got this, your life is pretty easy because using these two equations. So I'll just write it down on the side. So using this equation, that is the x square minus y square is equal to four. And x square plus y square is equal to five. Let's solve for x and y. Add them. So x becomes plus minus three by root two. Okay. Subtract them. So y becomes plus minus one by root two. Okay. Now two values of x and two values of y comes out from here. So if I have to make a complex number, I will get four possibilities. How four possibilities? One, you take a positive x, positive y, negative x, positive y, positive x, negative y, and negative x, negative y. Right. So four possibilities will arise because there are two each of x and two each of y. So you can have four permutation combinations. So plus root three by two plus one by root two i, minus root three by two plus one by root two i, plus root three by two minus one by root two i, and minus root three by two minus root i. So four possibilities comes out, right? But I know there should be only two answers, and I'm getting four. That means two of them are frivolous. Two of them are false roots. Correct. How do I know which is false root and which is the correct root? Which of the two is the correct answer, and which of the two is the uh, incorrect root? Which is asli? Which is nakli? How do you figure out? <laughs> huh? Any idea? Okay. The answer to this uh, dilemma lies in. This equation, very very important equation. <laughs> Whichever satisfies two x y equal to three, that will be your answer, or those will be your answer. The rest other will be neglected. So, does this satisfy two x y equal to three? Two root two uh, into three by root two into one by root two. Does it give you a three? Yes. So this is a root. Correct. But does the second one give you the two uh, x y equal to three condition? No, it gives you actually minus three. So this is not our answer. Similarly, this will also be not our answer. But this will be your answer. Correct. So in short, the answers out of these two, the square roots that you will get, will only be three by root two. In fact, you can write it in one step plus minus three by root two plus i times one by root two. Is it fine? Any questions? Any concerns? I'm sure in the school while you were doing complex numbers, uh, square root would have been taken up. It's an important concept for school as well. But what is not told in the school is actually the geometrical positioning of the square roots. What, sir? Again, you started geometrical interpretation. <laughs> See, again, my duty is to tell you from each and every perspective, right? <laughs> You didn't do. Are you Rama Krishna? Why? Hmm. What complex number? Me. What did you do all? Addition of complex number. Huh? Multiplication. Division. A little bit of conjugate. Hmm. That's what you did. That's insufficient, uh, guys and girls. That is not going to help you crack any exam. There is a big mismatch, at least in. Uh, And CRT and what is the requirement for the competitive exams? Anyways, let's not go into some other direction. So now I want to show you if you have a complex number, let's say z, correct, and you want to find out the square roots of that complex number, and you want to locate it directly on the argon plane. Now everybody, please pay attention. Okay, let's say 
I have been provided with a complex number z whose modulus and argument is known. Okay. If I want to locate the square roots of this complex number, so I let me write it down. Let's say the square root of z is z1 and z2. Z1 and Z2 will be located like this. Z1 will be located at half the argument. Anyway, I mean Z1 or Z2, whichever. I should say one of the roots will be located at half the argument. Okay, let's say Z1 and at a distance of root R. Getting it? And the other complex number is a negative of this. Negative of this means it should be located exactly mirror image about origin in short it should be located here okay again at an angle at a distance of root r from the origin and this gap this gap between or you can say this argument difference should be 180 degrees okay so this is how your uh, locations of the roots the square roots of a complex number can be uh, shown on the argon diagram or the argon plane. Huh? <laughs> Newton's law of motion, they deleted the three laws. <laughs> I hope it's a joke. Huh? <laughs> mm. hey? Seriously? <laughs> Oh my God. Sir, for complex numbers, they deleted the imaginary and the real part, sir. <laughs> okay. So, Setu, kya do ye jhoot hai? <laughs> Tell me that it's a lie. Okay, anyways, chalo, jokes apart. Uh, let's, have a, let's have a question. Let's have a question which will be done by you, not by me. Hmm. Up till now, what I've been observing that I am only giving question and I am only solving it. <laughs> okay, so this time you'll solve it. And of course, Nikhil, my good friend, he is making an honest attempt to solve most of the questions. Rest everybody is absolutely quite. What UT and all are going on? UT, 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 UT. Any UT is going on? Come on, guys. When will you live life from UT to UT? <laughs> Let's do our duty. Let's not live in UT. Hmm. Let's take some questions. Okay. <laughs> I'll answer that question in some time. Uh, but let me just first uh, give you a question. Yes, I would like you all. I think first one we already did now. Uh, so skip this. Maybe we can try third one. Please do this question. Do it now. School marks matters of class 11. <clears throat> Actually speaking, no, it doesn't. But if let's say board exam doesn't happen, okay, whose probability is there, then maybe they will average out your school 11th and 12th marks to find your final grades. Second thing is your school marks will automatically, you know, increase if you are able to solve these kind of questions, because we, we are going much beyond school. No, school is, this is school is like the, you can say the seed of a mango. Okay. If you're taking care of the entire mango seed is also taken care of. So core is your school. Okay. We are going much beyond the core. So school marks will automatically increase. I mean, I have never seen a person who has got into J advance and has done badly in school. <laughs> Other way around is definitely seen. Okay. Done very well in school, but did not get into any exam. But other way around is rarest of rare. Yeah, I know that I don't want to, I don't want to blame anybody here, but they teach only what NCRT prescripts. NCRT will not prescribe a lot, doesn't prescribe a lot of things. At least in maths, they don't. Physics and chemistry, I say they are good. Uh, physics, chemistry, NCRT is good. Maths, NCRT is not that great. Give me a response on the chat box, please. 
I'll have some Neer, Swalpa Neer. I'll come back with Swalpa Neer. Yes, any response? Anybody with the square root? Okay. Let's discuss it out. Oh, okay, you want some time? Okay, fine, fine. I'll, I'll give you some time. See, ultimately you should solve it, right? You are the one who is going to face it. <laughs> Okay, done. Okay, great. So, all right. So the same process will be repeated uh, once again, but this time I'll be slightly faster because uh, I've already discussed with you the nitty gritties of the operations. Okay. So I, I expanded it and I compared the real and the imaginary parts with each other. Okay. So the process which I discussed, I'll be adopting that process to solve this question. So I'll be using this formula. Okay, that means x square plus y square whole square is equal to minus 8 square, which is 64 and 2xy the whole square, which is 225, which is 289. So x square plus y square is equal to 17. Only 17 is possible. No plus minus, please. Only 17. So now that you know x square minus y square is negative 8 and x square plus y square is 17. What is wrong with my 7? Yeah, 17. Let's solve for x and y from here. Add it, 2x square is 9, that means x is plus minus 3 by root 2. And subtract it, uh, 2y square is 25, so y is plus minus 5 by root 2. Okay. So there are four possibilities for x plus i, y. 3 by root 2 plus i 5 by root 2. 3 by root 2 minus i 5 by root 2 minus 3 by root 2 plus i5 by root 2 and finally minus 3 by root 2 minus i5 by root 2. Okay. Now, out of these four, the ones which satisfy the second equation that is 2xy is equal to minus 15, that will be respected, rest will be ignored. So 2xy is minus 15, no. 2xy is minus 15, yes. 2xy is minus 15, x. 2xy minus 15, no. So my final square roots, my final answer to this question will be nothing but plus minus 3 by root 2 minus i5 by root 2. Is this fine? Any questions, any concerns? Excellent, excellent. Uh, very good, Setu. 
is it fine one question for sure will come in your school exams also if at all your school teacher has taught you this else we'll move on to the next operation which is logarithms of complex numbers how to find log of complex numbers and what kind of question related to log of complex number will be asked let us take that into picture so logarithms of complex numbers logarithm of complex numbers now see here for logarithm of complex number the best way is your euler's notation euler's form is the very very you can say handy way when you are dealing with logarithms of complex number so let us say if you have a complex number which is r e to the power i theta okay and somebody is asking you to write the log of that complex number to the base of e or ln z so remember it will give you i mean you already know your log operation so this is nothing new that i am talking over here so this is ln r and this is i theta so basically it gives you another complex number you can say it is another complex number where your a is your ln r and your b is your theta that is to say this complex number real part is your log of the modulus and your imaginary part is the argument of that complex number right so if you take a log of a complex number you get another complex number whose real part is ln mod z and imaginary part is argument of that complex number so if somebody asks you a casual question here uh what is uh, ln of 1 plus a right what is ln of 1 plus a so can you if you remember this result directly you can say it is going to be ln root 2 plus i pi by 4 is it clear any question here so it is a plus i b a being ln mod z and b being argument of that complex number so mod of this complex number is root 2 argument is pi by 4 this is your answer clear any questions any questions okay if you don't have any questions i i have a question to ask <laughs> okay so uh, my question is find the value of sin of ln of i to the power i why did i write a one here okay a single question find ln of oh, sorry find sin of ln ln means log to the base of i to the power i Excellent, Sethu. Very good. Okay. Now, before you solve this question, I have another, you know, uh, question related to this. I to the power i is which of the following? Is it purely imaginary? It's purely real. None of the above. okay let's say i i ask this as a you know supplementary question so which of the following is correct for i to the power i right surprisingly i to the power i is a purely real is the yeah, it's a purely real number yes how let's see see what is i in euler's notation i is 1 e to the power i pi by 2 this is the euler's notation for i remember r e to the power i theta and r is 1 for i and pi by 2 is uh, your argument okay so if i do i to the power i basically you are doing e to the power i pi by 2 by the way 
let's not write one and waste our time that means this whole raised to the power of i which is nothing but e to the power i square pi by 2 which is actually e to the power minus pi by 2 so basically it's a purely a real number okay please note this down this itself can come as a question i to the power i is it purely real or not okay now see the question setter has asked you sign of ln of i to the power i which you just now figured was e to the power minus pi by 2 so ln e to the power minus pi by 2 is actually minus pi by 2 i hope you all know your log properties by now and sin minus pi by 2 is negative 1 so the answer to this question is negative 1 is it clear any questions any concerns do let me know Okay, so I would like you to solve one more question related to this concept and then we can call it off. Done everybody? Okay, let's take another question. Last question for the day. Express 1 plus i to the power minus i as a plus ib. In short, find your A and B. In short, the question is asking you to find A and B values or A and B expressions, whatever you get. Okay, so this is an interesting question. I will also, you know, help you out. See, one plus i, if you write it in the Euler form, this is your one plus i expression, correct? Ah, uh, no, 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 Sita. The answer is much more complicated. <laughs> so if I raise it to the power of minus i, which means you are raising this to the power of minus i which means you're doing root two to the power minus i into e to the power of uh, minus i square pi by four, correct? Which is root two to the power of minus i into e to the power pi by four, okay? So this is your expression for this, okay? Now you're calling, now you're calling this term as a plus ib. Okay, you call this as a plus i b as per your given requirement of the question. Uh, not really Nikhil, but good try, good try. Now take a log of both the sides of the base e. Okay, so when I take log of both the sides of the base e, this will give you ln root 2 to the power minus i plus ln of e to the power pi by 4. By the way, ln of e to the power by pi by 4 is just a pi by 4. So it's something like this, pi by 4 plus this minus will come outside here. Okay. This is equal to uh, minus i ln root 2. Am I right? Or you can say something like this. Pi by 4 plus i ln 1 by root 2. Okay. So this is your ln of a plus ib. Correct. Now, if you recall, in the beginning, I had done this operation with you and I told you that the log of a complex number gives you a, another complex number whose real part is ln argue, uh, modulus of z 
and imaginary part is the argument of that complex number correct so a plus ib ln is giving you this what does it tell you it tells you that modulus of a plus ib that is nothing but r is your or you can say modulus of this term is your let me write it like this so let this be r that means you are trying to say ln r is pi by 4 this term so this term is your this term so ln of r or ln of mod a plus ib is pi by 4 that means r is e to the power pi by 4 correct second thing you are saying argument of z that means your theta is ln of 1 by root 2 correct yes or no now you know r and theta of a complex number what is the real part a r cos theta and what is the imaginary part r sin theta so your answer to a is e to the power pi by 4 cos of ln of 1 by root 2 and imaginary part will be e to the power pi by 4 sin of ln of 1 by root 2 is this fine so the answer is not as simple as what you people thought it to be so this is your a and b values is it clear any questions any questions any concerns here <clears throat> okay so with this we end our today's discussion there are many more things to be covered up okay